2018, I and a number of my friends, including Jack Posobiec and Ali, held a rally against political violence where we specifically condemned white supremacy, all forms of domestic terrorism, all forms of political violence. You can find coverage of that in 2017. Now, in 2020, does anyone in the media ever bring that up? No. So that's why this, well, you condemn, condemn them, it's a hoax. It's always, always a hoax. Trump's condemned that stuff a hundred times. How, how many more times does he have to condemn it? Does, does Biden have to condemn this latest police ambush shooting every day? Right? It's never, they never say he condemned it. Trump condemned it. He just did as a matter of fact. He condemned him at Charlottesville, and yet Chris Walls asked about the fine people hoax. Again, I hmm. held a freaking event, an event condemning all this stuff. Doesn't matter. You're not, it's just a lie. It's always. She's in the house. It's a lie. There's always going to be a lie. The question itself is rigged. The question itself is dishonest. And again, I'll prove it. Google Mike Cernovich rally against political violence. Mike Cernovich rally against political violence. When did that happen? 2017. Just unfair. It is what it is. But that's why Trump is reluctant to play into that frame, to play those games. Because if you... If you condemn it, you're condemning shit that like everybody would condemn. I condemned it. I held a fucking event. You know what I mean? It, it's just such a lie to say you have to condemn it again. What more can I, for example, do? We held an event, Rally Against Political Violence 2017. We held a separate event. We said, here's the all right guys. They're having their shitty little event. Here's ours. We don't like those guys. In 2020, The Atlantic under Jeffrey Goldberg, the same guy who claimed that Trump insulted the troops, released a movie where they tie me to Richard Spencer. They literally put me in a movie with Richard Spencer, even though when they asked me to be in the movie, they promised me he wouldn't be in it. So the whole question is always a hoax. It's always rigged. It's always unfair because you can condemn this stuff 100 times. They'll ask you 101 times. And then in the mind of the listener, they just frame that as an, oh, you must be connected to these guys somehow. Oh, Trump didn't condemn this. How many times does he have to condemn them? Right. He's done multiple speeches on it, multiple tweets, multiple talks about it. And I don't get one one hundredth of what Trump does. And even me, it's just like because to own me, people will be like, well, what about this thing? And it'll be some like horrific thing that happened. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's a horrific thing that happened. Um, or the, I, like I remember there was a Christchurch shooting and I was like, half my family's Muslim. I hope that fucking guy gets the death penalty. But they're and they're like, oh, and nobody's ever like, oh, OK, I thought that maybe I had you read wrong. I thought I had you pegged wrong. Maybe I didn't really understand your point of view. It's like, you're not owning me. It's like, yes, put, put them to death. The death penalty. I support the death penalty for terrorism. All, of all kinds. So that's why last night, the Chris Walls, he spread the fine people hoax, which Scott Adams has debunked a hundred times. And Jake Tapper, even at one point, in a moment of honesty, debunked it. And what does that get you? Right? What, what does that get you? And that's, by the way, why we can't have honest discourse in the country. It's why Trump won. It's why people are becoming just more militant and, and me just fucking pissed off i'm just fucking pissed off about this shit because like nobody likes terrorism and by the way i pl i say it the other side when there is an islamic terrorist attack i don't go to my muslim friends and you condemn that of course they do right of course they do so i've always thought that that was such a dumb boomer conservative point where well why don't muslims condemn islamic terrorism but uh, they do the number one people killed by islamic terrorists are who what's the number one group of people killed by islamic terrorism oh muslims so the boomer cons are like well you know you need to have a march it's like they have they've condemned it what more do you want from them and now so in a way it's karma you know what i mean if you're a conservative in a way it's karma you harass muslim people for fucking 20 years fucking good people harass them for 20 years oh there's this jihad attack in fucking beirut it's like well, yeah i mean it's the middle east you know the ira the irish republican army used to bomb people there was wars between Catholics and Protestants and nobody's like, you Catholics better condemn this while you're going to church. Right. Some guys like you lost it, dude. Yeah. Cause that hit home, bro. How do you feel now? How do you feel being shitty to Muslim people for 20 years? And now those same shitty tactics are reflected back at you. That's why you're pissed off. I haven't lost anything. I'm doing great, but you're just like, Oh shit, that hit home. Maybe that was a shitty thing to do. Maybe it was shitty for me to just be like, well, there was a jihadist attack somewhere. You better condemn this, you random Muslim person. And you're like, oh, that's kind of shitty. And, and that's now what's being done to Trump. It's shitty. It's not good. It's not ethical. It's what you would expect provocateurs, 
trolls to do. It's not what you'd expect from a presidential debate. So my perspective on the debate, why is this race? Um, I like Twitter trolls on the left. Molly Jong Fast is a funny uh, Twitter troll. And she trolled me the other day. And, and by the way, the trolling is nasty. Calling people a Russian agent is a nasty thing to say. Um, especially people who have been served in the military, had a f- friends die in the military, fighting for this country, have had relatives there. But this Twitter trolling. So I'm fine with the Twitter trolls, even the ones on the left. I'm fine with that. It's the trolling. But when I watch a presidential debate, I expect a fucking debate. I expect the moderator to host a debate. I expect the moderator to be a referee, to call a clean game, to say, no, the fine people think Biden is a hoax, that that is a hoax. And to say, no, no, Biden, that's a lie. And for not to not say Trump condemned white supremacy for 100 times. The question in an honest debate would say, here's how here's how you'd ask if you're Chris Walls. You would say, Joe Biden, President Donald Trump had said that he condemns white supremacy and neo-Nazis. Why do you continue to say that he called white supremacists very fine people? Hmm? Isn't that the honest question? Isn't that the honest question? Joe Biden, you've said that President Trump has refused to condemn white supremacists, but he condemned them and he never said they were very fine people. And then the flip side to be with Trump would say, President Trump, will you just say again for everyone who doubts this, that you condemn white supremacist violence and neo-Nazis? That would be that would be how you would honestly pose the question. Instead of this, the Proud Boys, the Proud, who the, why the fuck are we talking about the Proud Boys all the time? It's like 50 people, 100 people. That, that's what like pisses me off so much about the dumb world we live in. In a way, we're all victims of our own making. We are victims of our own making, right? We are victims of our own making. We're getting what we deserve. Why do we deserve better? Why do we deserve better? And so we're here and we're like, we're talking about the Proud Boys again. A, a drinking club, 20 people show up at Portland. Every media outlet covers some of the world, the New York Times, every outlet that should be focusing on big issues th- with them. We got to talk about them all fucking day, uh, right? F- fuck, right? Just like, fuck. So when people are like, you're losing, it's like, no, I'm just saying what people feel, which is like, fucking not this shit again. It's like a ex-wife that <laughs> won't go away. You're just like, okay, what more do you want to say? It's a drinking club. One of them got shot by a member of Antifa. So if you want to get into it, there's video of an ambush murder against a member of the Proud Boys, right? Just we forgot about that though. Nobody wants to talk about that anymore. That just goes down the memory hole. So we have. I said this before, and I say it again. This how I feel. We have now. Who saw the movie 2011: A Space Odyssey? The beginning when the chimpanzees are picking up the sticks and hitting each other. That's where I feel we are today. The dichotomy of our age is Elon Musk wants us to go to Mars. I want people to use plant medicine to heal themselves spiritually. So Elon Musk wants people to go to Mars. I want people to go to mushrooms and ayahuasca. And we're fighting against people who want us to be chimpanzees again and hit each other with sticks. That's the great dichotomy of our age. The people who want to explore the stars They want to explore the universe. They want to experience the universe of consciousness, the soul within you, the universe in your mind and outside of your mind. Versus people who want us to pick up sticks and hit each other, right? Hit each other like we're just chimps again. Like we're angry little chimp armies running around with sticks, hitting each other, shitting all over each other, throwing shit at each other. So that's the dichotomy of the age. And that's why I tell people I've never been more simultaneously optimistic and pessimistic. Now, how can you be both? How can you be just fucking pissed off at the world and also full of love and joy and optimism? Here's why. Some people want to take us to the stars. The stars of the universe in our mind, our souls, our hearts, the literal stars, Mars. Some people, the most people in the media, they want us to be angry little chimpanzees running around with sticks again. They want us to return to the Stone Age. So the choice is, are we going to go to the Ice Age or rather, are we going to go to the space age or the stone age? Right? That's the question. That's the message. Are we going to go to the space age or the stone age? Last night was the stone age. Last night was the fucking stone age. That's us saying that we don't deserve nice things. 
that's us saying that we don't deserve humanity. We don't deserve this gift we have from the universe, from God, the architect, the creator, whatever you want to call it. That's us saying we're not worthy of Mars. We're not worthy of the space age. We want to be angry chimpanzees smashing each other over the head with sticks. So the question is, it's a question I always ask people, do you want to go to the space age or the stone age? It's our choice, people. It's our choice. We can go to one or the other, but we're going to go one or the other. This, um, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, it's going to be one or the other. We're going to go. We're not this middle class thing we lived. That's over. So we're going to go one place or the other. Age or the Stone Age. And that's our choice. And that's why you have to keep the faith. You have to look at the long time. You have to look at the trends. You have to realize that there are people who want to take us to space. Right? Mind, the universe that exists within us, the universe that exists without us, or do you want to return to base nature? This is the, the lesson that apart from the proposition that what we have is not natural. What if you started from the proposition that the natural state of humanity is wretched, violent, is angry chimps hitting each other, it's genocide, it's the conquistadors, but we can elevate above that. We can elevate above it. So that's my, my, my message to you, friends. Space age or stone age. Choice is yours.